the two most common questions that I get on this channel are what is the best fish finder for the price point and now that I bought it, how do I actually use it? So the answer to the first question is this. This is the Garmin Echo Map 93SV UHD 2. I know that's a mouthful, but I'm gonna explain why this is the best unit for the price point in just a second. First of all, huge thank you to Garmin for sending me this unit. I'm gonna be filming an entire series of videos, breaking down each screen, deep diving into the settings, and then most importantly, how to use this unit to find fish, which is what most of you wanna know. So why is this the best unit for the price point? Well, if you've been watching this channel over the past probably four or five years, you would know that I've filmed multiple videos with the older versions of these, the first gens. I put three on my older boat that I used to have and one on a snowmobile for ice fishing. And I can tell you the reason this is the best unit for the price point is because it has all the bells and whistles of a unit that is $1,500 or more, and it comes in at $1,199. This unit has 2D chirp sonar, down view, side view, GPS mapping systems with built-in Navionics, and comes with the GT56 transducer all in the box. This unit and its little brother, the 73SV, are the only units under 1200 bucks that actually have touchscreen technology. Besides that, it has Wi-Fi capability, so you can link it up to your Garmin Force trolling motor and control your trolling motor just by the touch of the screen. You can also link it up via Wi-Fi to your phone through the Active Captain app, which you can download any updates to the unit, and you can download new maps through the Navionic system. And probably most importantly why a lot of people bought this unit was because it is compatible with the LiveScope system, whether that's the LiveScope Plus or the regular LiveScope or just your PS22 first generation Panoptix sonar, this thing will connect to it. And because this is compatible with the LiveScope unit, this is arguably the hottest combination for a LiveScope or LiveScope Plus with this unit that Garmin actually sells. Uh, for the price point, combination between LiveScope and this system, it's hard to beat this price. So the installation on this unit is actually pretty simple. So two of the biggest issues for bad screen quality are not a clean source of power and your transducer install. So when we talk about clean power, you want to run a designated house battery directly to your unit if you can. When you start running it through multiple fuse boxes, that can possibly dirty up the image or if you're wiring this directly to your starting battery while your motor's running, it can cause an electrical interference to kind of make the screen not look as great as it should. Uh, the other part is having a transducer that is mounted level to how your boat sits in the water. Having that transducer mounted as close as level as possible to your boat as it sits in the water is gonna give you the best image for all screen, side view, down view, and 2D sonar. One of the biggest improvements that Garmin actually came up with with this EchoMap series is the uh, mounting system and how you can quick disconnect these units to the actual platform which mounts to your boat. The older EchoMap units used a plastic compression piece to have these EchoMaps just kind of snap in. These brand new units use a latch system which are much more secure and really lock in solid to your mount on the boat. So now let's walk through some basic screens that the Echo Map has and some basic settings as you're running down the lake. All right, so as you can see on the screen, we have options on the bottom here. Mark for waypoint, your home button, your info button, and then these three dots are your settings giving the page that you're on. First, let's just go to the home button and we'll show you some screen options that come up. So first here is the charts menu. You can see I got the navigation chart, the fishing chart, and the 3D chart. Well, it's a 3D viewpoint of where you are on a body of water. Today I was actually out on the Mississippi River, you can see here, uh, just kind of cruising along the bank here looking for some walleye. But the cool thing about a, a lot of the chart systems on these units, you can update them via the Active Captain app, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Most of you are probably just going to run this fishing chart, which the Navionics is just a great high detail for a lot of the lakes and rivers that most of you fish. Um, it gives one foot increments on the depth and it gives a credible amount of detail. Right now I got this in simulator mode, but you can see both in this mode and in real time on the Mississippi River, you can see that contour, those breaks. So if you click the home button again, it brings back the four menu selection. The next uh, tab here is the sonar tab. It's gonna give you all of your sonar options. So I got 2D sonar starting from left to right here, 2D sonar, clear view, which is your down imaging, 
side view, which is your side imaging. And then you got a couple split screen options. Your flasher, which typically is used for ice fishing. It's actually a pretty cool system. So if you have an ice bundle, um, this is a great unit to bring out on the ice with you. You can see we have our three live scope options, um, as well as a 3D if you have a, a transducer that is capable of 3D uh, display like this. This unit it can connect to it and display an image like this. Most of you are probably just going to go with the regular GT54, GT56 transducer. So you're just going to be running the regular 2D sonar, clear view, and side view. And potentially, um, if you get a live scope system, you could run forward view or down view. But those are our sonar options. The next is the actual combo tab. So you can have a split screen, like a chart setting. 2D sonar and my clear view, which is my down imaging. This is a great feature purely for safety as you're running down maybe a body of water you've never fished before. You can see your depth, make sure you're not going to hit any sandbars or rock piles, and then you got your mapping system right there. Probably the most common combo that I run on a lot of my videos um, is this one right here. I actually renamed it a combo number six side view and my sonar charts. If I'm searching for brush piles, rock piles, pieces of timber or just suspended schools of bait fish or even crappie. Side view is the screen that I'm using. If you want to enlarge one image or the other, you just tap one side of the screen and you can actually click this button on the top right corner where the four boxes are, or four triangles are. It expands it. And then if you want to go back, you just hit the back button down here and it goes back to your split screen. So this is probably the most common combo that I use. It's a great system to find schools of crappie, schools of bait fish, a lot of pieces of cover like that. There's a big school right there. There's some fish on that stump. Too bad we're not on the water right now. Okay, let's go back to our main menu, which the next tab over is the vessel menu. And probably the most common menu option you're going to use is the active captain and this is going to allow you to connect your cell phone or some sort of Wi-Fi device to your unit to upgrade uh, any type of mapping system. Maybe there's some updates needed for the unit. You can update your Garmin LiveScope system as well when it's connected to the unit. Just a great way to possibly even share waypoints from unit to unit if you are moving to a different boat, maybe your buddy's boat or something. It's a great way to do all that through the Active Captain app on your phone. Also on this vessel tab, you got a bunch of different options, kind of showing your gauges as you're running down the lake or the river. Um, when you connect it via the NEMA 2000 cable to your engine or possible other GPS devices on your boat. Obviously, this demonstration here is connected to a Mercury. Um, you can see RPMs, miles per hour, or miles per hour, uh, your gallons of fuel left in your system, percentage of trim and everything. So this is probably the system you're going to use um, if you do have a NEMA 2000 connection or if you're going to upgrade some sort of mapping system or just update the unit in and of itself. So a few more options actually you can see on the right side of the screen here I got my power button. This if you hold it down. Um, if you hold it down for about two or three seconds this option will come up once the unit is already on. It allows you to sleep the station, so maybe you get done scanning, you found what you wanted to find, you're going to start fishing, you don't want to burn a bunch of battery up, you can sleep the station, help conserve power. You can turn the system off completely or you can just cancel, go back to find and fish. If you're on whatever screen that you're on, if you simply push the power button one time, it'll bring up this menu. So on the top of it, I have my backlight, which allows me to either dim or brighten the screen. Turn it down a touch there. Um, I have my color mode. This is in auto right now. So Garmin's actually pretty smart in that it knows when sunrise and sunset ta times are. So if you have this on auto, as soon as it gets to the sunset of whatever day that you're fishing, it'll actually turn it to night colors, which will darken the screen. Um, or you can select day or night colors. You can see as I'm selecting between the two, the screen's getting brighter and darker. And it's actually changing how the map system is displayed as well. See, it's, it's not a blue background, it's a white background. Typically, if you just leave this on auto, 
it'll be just fine. There are a few other options in here. You can disable the sonar altogether if you ever need to do that. Uh, or you can select this power button. That's going to give up that same menu of allowing you to sleep the station or turn the system off completely. So just below the power button, you got a plus and minus uh, buttons here. This allows you to zoom in and out depending on the screen that you're on. So on my side view screen right here, you'll notice I have this set for 60 feet left and right. Oops. On the bottom here, it's 60 feet left and right. If I hit my plus button, it's going to go by increments of five. It's going to zoom in five feet. Now it's only showing me 55 feet left and right. If I hit it one more time, now it's 50 feet left and right. If I hit the minus button, it's going to bring me back out to my 60 feet. And I can keep going like this in five foot increments to however wide that you want to display it. Um, if you were in your clear view or even your 2D sonar, this is going to either uh, expand your depth or shrink your depth as you can see. So the plus button is going to exp expand the depth by five foot increments. So I just went from 30 feet to 35 feet. If I hit the minus button, it's going to shrink that depth. Um, same thing on the 2D sonar. If I hit the minus button, it's going to shrink the depth by five foot increments. If I hit the plus button, it's going to expand it by five foot increments. Another quick function while within side imaging that also has a zoom in, zoom out function, even though it doesn't actually use the plus minus, and that's actually if you pinch the screen, it'll have a zoom function in this box. So you can really zoom in on a piece of cover or a school of fish to give a good look at them. Another way to do that real quick, hit the three buttons and where it says zoom, just turn that on and then you can hit back. And now you have a magnifying glass to kind of go around and zoom in on different schools of fish or pieces of cover. And then to get rid of it, just simply pinch it or you can click your three buttons again and then simply push the zoom and it'll take it off the screen for you. So that's your power button, your plus and minus button, and your little zoom function that might be helpful for a lot of you. Now you got buttons one, two, three, and four on the side here. These are your hotkeys. So typically I would set these up as some sort of combo or a screen that I would use a lot. So side view is a screen that I would use a lot. I'm gonna set this up as number one for my hot key or my short key. So to do that, I'm just gonna hold down the number one. It's gonna bring up this message that says page saved shortcut key number one. I'm gonna hit okay. So now if I go to a different screen, let's just jump to 2D sonar here, and I wanna jump back into side view, I'm just gonna hit the number one button, and it's gonna bring me right back to it. Another split screen that I use quite a bit is actually my combo here. If you're a crappie fisherman like I am, you're gonna be using this screen a lot. So that's the other shortcut I'd probably use. I'm gonna make this number two shortcut key. So now I can, if I'm on plane and I'm kind of running around, I can see safely kind of where I'm navigating a body of water. I come off plane, maybe I'm idling around a little bit. I start seeing uh, pieces of cover where there might be some fish or I just start seeing some fish, I can quick hit the number one key, jump back into a full screen of side view and get a really good image. So you got any comments or questions about the basic overview settings that you saw on the Garmin Echo Map, uh, please post them in the comment section below. There will be further in-depth videos talking about charts, talking about 2D sonar, clear view, side view, active captain, anything else you might want to know, further videos to come. Appreciate you watching as always. Good luck on the water. We'll see you in the next one.